Well, Donald Trump defies his detractors once again, surging to a new high in a Quinnipiac University poll. Trump leads with 28 percent support among Republicans, up from 20 percent last month. Dr. Ben Carson is in second place with 12 percent. Next in a three-way tie, Jeb Bush, Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. Let's bring in Chris Wallace. He is the anchor of Fox News Sunday. It tells you something about this race, doesn't it, Chris, when the two leaders in this latest poll are both gentlemen who have never before held political office. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just <laughs> am shaking my head, John, looking at that poll because you've got Trump at 28 percent just swamping the field and then Ben Carson at 12 and then all of the governors and all of the senators uh, in single digits. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, and you're exactly right. And you look at Fiorina, who's up now at 5 percent between them. Let me do a quick math. That's 45 percent of the electorate saying they want somebody who has never spent a day in public office. And boy, if that doesn't send a message uh, to the politicians and the politics as usual in this country, I don't know what does. But then there are some other interesting findings in that same poll when asked Republicans or Republican leaning voters which candidates they definitely would not support for the Republican nomination for president. Take a look who's at the top there. Donald Trump at 26 percent, Jeb Bush at 18 uh, percent, Chris Christie at 14 percent, Rand Paul at 14 and Lindsey Graham at 13 percent. I mean, the negatives for Donald Trump are pretty high as well. Well, that's right. And that is going to be the, the challenge that Donald Trump will face going forward. He's got a high floor of uh, basically a quarter of the Republican electorate uh, favors him for president. But you've also got about a quarter of the Republican electorate saying, and of course, that could, both can change. But at this point, that they wouldn't consider him for president. So so he's got a high floor and a relatively low ceiling. Uh, he's obviously got to keep the floor, but he's got to raise the ceiling a bit so that he becomes more acceptable to more uh, elements of the party. Really interesting, though, it, not just in this poll, but other polls, you see him leading among evangelicals, among the Tea Party, among so-called moderates. Uh, I mean, it's not just that he, he's got a strong base of support, John. It's also that he has expanded his appeal across all elements of the Republican Party. Also interesting to, to see whether he has pulled in Democratic voters. We just had him uh, there in South Carolina. He's holding a, a news conference, making a speech right now. But you talked about raising the floor. Somebody who, who did raise the floor very much in her last performance was Carly Fiorina. Now she's in a battle with Republican officials as well as CNN with Fiorina at risk of not qualifying for the next primetime debate. Her campaign is disputing the formula that CNN is using of average poll numbers since July, saying more recent polls have shown her numbers surging. This after her widely acclaimed performance in the early debate here on Fox. Now, that debate took, took place in early August, Chris. CNN is using data from polls going all the way back to mid-July, and under that formulation, she gets disqualified from this next debate. I have to say, and look, CNN's going to decide their qualifications and their standards for setting who gets into the top 10 and who doesn't. I find it very curious. I know what we did at Fox was we took the last five polls, and they were all polls from the last couple of days before the debate. We wanted the, the, the state of public opinion in the, uh, in the public support for these candidates as recent, as close as possible to the debate. The idea that you'd go back two months because their debate isn't until mid-September strikes me as very odd. And exactly as you point out, it, 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 it completely masks the surge in support that there has been for Free Arena since the Fox debate on August 6th. So why they would want to go back to July strikes me as a very curious decision. You would think they would only take the last few polls before the debate in September. That's what we did at Fox in just before the debate in August. Well, uh, obviously, they seem to be mining ancient history for some of their information. Uh, her campaign is upset about it. They're complaining. Do they stand a chance of, of getting those rules changed? Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing because on the one hand, I think that CNN made a mistake in the first place saying we're going to go back and average polls all the way to July. Having said that, you know, if you look like you're caving under pressure, mm. then, you know, who's to say the next candidate isn't going to complain? Well, you're using national polls and you should be using polls in Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, you know, it just seems to me you have to set a standard and then you have to live with a standard. I just think CNN set the wrong standard.
Chris Wallace. Chris, thank you. You bet. Don't miss Chris this weekend on Fox News Sunday. He has an exclusive interview with one of the candidates, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Check out the listings for when Fox News Sunday airs on your local Fox station.